and it, let's go to our 2022 NHL draft again here and do some quick hits. Um, Mark Shag on our on the Hockey Writers has done a great job doing a bunch of these types of articles. Um, but let's give our takes on a few of these things that he's kind of he's written and given his take. Um, let's start with one that he does every year. Uh, it's called the Steal of the Draft. And he, this is where he picks one player that he thinks is going to be the steal of the draft. So um, his pick was Frank Nazar. Um, great pick. I mean, I think he's going to yeah. be, again, undersized, but super skilled. And one guy that's been on, like, only one that kind of is weird is Craig Button's one. He has him, like, down in the latter part of the first round, which makes no sense to me. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. He should be a top, I would say he's probably be a top 15 pick, maybe even yeah. top 10, uh, depending. But that's Mark's pick. Um, to start with you, Peter. Who is your pick for the steal of the draft? I am going to say Liam Ogren. Oh no, wait, never mind. That, that's that's for a different pick. Um, <laughs> I am I am going to go Owen Pickering. Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it's a Sunday. Uh, there we go. Just edit that out. Um, no, I'm going to go Owen Pickering. I'm I, I. It is going to be Owen Pickering from the pick. Um, mainly because of the fact that he's got the tool set. Um, it's but his offensive game is wrong. Even on the defensive side of the puck, he's really really strong. I think he has the potential to be a very steady top four defenseman. And mm. you know, we saw what he was able to do with Team Canada at the U18s, despite not having a lot of uh, you know positives to take from that tournament. Aside from Bedard and Fantilli, you could take the fact that Owen Pickering had promise of being one of their top defenders in that tournament. And if he's able to put everything together, you know, he's got all the tools. I think he's going to be able to like combine everything and, you know, improve his stock, improve his value and improve his overall skill set. So he might be my steal of the draft, even though he may be anywhere between, you know, top 20 to later end of the first round, Mm -hmm. whoever's going to draft him, I think it's probably going to prove maybe later on that probably should have been higher ranked up maybe. Yeah, I love Owen Pickering. He's a guy that, uh, I mean, I want the Canucks to pick, but I think 15 is a little high uh, for him. So, um, but, you know, he may turn out to be that type of a top 20 pick and top 15 pick uh, when all is said and done. So, yeah, Pickering's been a guy that he was on my uh, top 10 defense um, article as well. So, I believe, yes. Uh, <laughs> this is all the stuff I've written. I can't remember. Um Devin, who is your steal of the draft? This is a topic that the more I think about it, the more names come to mind. I feel like I could sit here for like five minutes and talk about players that could be the steal of the draft. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I've even seen like Matthew Savoy and more and more things fall out of the top 10. And if he's out of the top 10, I think he's the steal of the draft. Mm. But we're not going to talk about Matthew Savoy because, yeah. Uh, the player <laughs> I have in mind for this one today is uh, going to be Noah Oslin. Um, and the reason why I think it's Noah Oslin is because, uh, I mean, over at, uh, my Red Wings team here at THW, we've been doing draft targets for the Red Wings and Oslin is one we did. And he's kind of a, uh, kind of an odd pick of one to do because he's Mm -hmm. not one that immediately comes to mind. But I think if, uh, if all things go well for him and his development, he could end up being a top 10 player in this draft class. He is a phenomenal playmaker. He's a very smart hockey player. Um, he's developing over there in Sweden and you know how the Swedes handle their, uh, handle their young players development. Mm. So I have every confidence that he's going to continue to become a very well-rounded playmaking center. Mm. Um, and he's a center and Lord knows how, how uh, valuable, good, you know, potential top six centers can be. Mm. Um, I, I don't, you know, as much as, you know, we had that draft target for him for the Red Wings, I don't think he's going to be a top 10 pick. I'm not mm. even sure if he's going to be a top 15 pick. I think he might end up being more in the uh, 20 to 25 mm. range. And if a playoff team, you know, a team that's in the playoffs is going to get a player like Noah Oslin, uh, that's going to be huge for them. Because like mm-hmm. I said, uh, his his ceiling is top six center. Maybe if everything goes right for him, maybe even top line center, not top tier top center, but like, you know, doable top center, yeah. if that makes any sort of sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, I it's, it's no awesome for me because, you know, the further down he falls, I think the more value he's going to provide for the team that drafts him. Yeah, that's, that's going to be, he, he's one of my favorites too. And uh, I want the Canucks to be able to draft all three of them, but that's not happening unless they do a crazy, get three first round picks and um, yeah, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Pull a, I want uh, that Boston whole Bruins. line. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, my, my steal of the draft, I mean, there's a couple guys that kind of come to mind in this, but uh, this is a guy I've seen too many times in the 20s and makes no sense to me. It's Denton Matejchuk. And yeah. uh, I yeah. keep seeing him in the 2025 20, range. And I'm like, if, so, if teams let him drop that far, that's a steal. Now he gets draft, draft in the top 10, top 15, then probably not. But if he gets going down to the 20s, where a lot of kind of these final rankings have him kind of ranked, I don't like it. Like, <laughs> the, and that means the Canucks <laughs> passed on him, which is uh, which would make me really angry. I mean, I guess it depends on who they pick. But um, Matejchuk, I think, has the potential to be um, a poor man's Quinn Hughes because he's just has he just has so much offensive uh, upside. And they talk about his defense isn't the best. I mean, I, Quinn Hughes had the same thing when he was drafted, and look what he's done. I mean, he's improved immensely defensively. Uh, you can teach that. You can't teach skating. You can't teach, well, you can refine skating. I mean, but um, you can't teach the offensive skill that he's got and the, you know, the, that offensive instincts and the hockey IQ and all that. So um, Canucks fans, you already know uh, that I love Matej Chuck. I wrote a, a draft target piece uh, for the Canucks on him. And he's my guy that I hope the Canucks take, unless he's taken before that. Um, if the Canucks don't do that, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't care if he's not a right-hand shot because everyone's like, well, Canucks need right-hand shots, but having Hughes on one pairing and a truck on another, that's pretty good to, to me. I mean, you can fill those right side out with some good uh, defensive two-way guys uh, to complement them. So, um, Matejchuk's my guy for steal the draft and just quickly, Rutger McGroarty is my other one because, mm-hmm. Uh, again, he's, he seems to be in those 20 range and I don't understand it. Like I don't, I don't understand why he's in the latter part of the first round. He should be in the top 15, but you know, I, I'm sure Toronto Maple Leafs fans are happy to see him around there because he could potentially be available for them. So (laughs) I, he, he may be, uh, maybe actually available down there. So, but he's going to be a steal if he does get drafted Mm -hmm. there. Okay. Let's go to our next category. Uh, the do not draft. Uh, list this does not mean don't draft them at all which i mean yeah. from the title it kind of sounds that way um this is where you do not draft them in a certain position so um i mean who do i start with first peter i'll start with you devin uh who do you have as a do not draft um type player here well i'm glad that you started with the uh you know the asterisk that this doesn't mean don't draft them it just means don't you know if you're if you're not in the right area don't draft yeah. them uh because the player i have in mind is danila Yurov. Um, and the thing with your off is, uh, if certain, uh, political situations were different, I think your off would be a top 10 pick and there wouldn't be much debate mm. about it. Um, but unfortunately we don't live in a perfect world and, yeah. uh, <laughs> that, uh, that affects your off. Um, it, there's, there's going to be a lot of questions about whether or not he's going to come over from Russia. Um, and that will persist until he inevitably does or doesn't. Um, you know, I'm thinking of like Kaprizov where it took him until he was 24 to show up, you know, these things happen. Um, but as a, you know, in a bubble, in a vacuum, rather, uh, you're off is a very high end talent in this, uh, in this class. Like mm-hmm. I said, I think he'd be a top 10 pick and there wouldn't be much debate about it. Um, so I think if you're, if you're picking in the top 10, what you usually want out of those picks is a player that's going to play sooner rather than later. And, you know, have the, uh, have the potential to, uh, you know, to transform your franchise and, you know, mm. take, take, take you to another level. I think you has that potential, but uh, as things are right now, you can't, you know, confidently say, Oh, he might be here in a year. You know, it, it might be a while before mm. he shows up and is, you know, is wearing your Jersey. So um, depending on where you're at, which is the caveat with all of this, uh, I would not draft the Nilla year off. Yeah, and, and that's that's a big thing to be for all, a lot of the Russian players that are, are playing over there right now because, yeah, there's a lot of that unknown. And that's why Pod Colson dropped in yep. his draft yep. year because of the KHL thing, um, not the political uh, stuff that's happening right now, but um, because he had a contract in the KHL. And, and it's like, well, you're not going to see him for a few years. And that's going to be the case with a lot of these guys that have those contracts, which KHL seem to be trying to do a bit more because they want to keep their players, which makes sense. All right, Peter, who do you have on your do not draft list? Um, 
I see, you know, a couple of times where Alexander Paravalov is in the top 32 and I did have him at one point, but he has dropped for me. I would not draft Alexander Paravalov in the first round. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a little bit of question marks with his skating and his decision-making to like pick the lanes to go like, you know, it just doesn't seem very consistent at times. At times he's got great bursts of speed at times he doesn't. And he always takes the go to the outside instead of, and, you know, cuts to the inside. So he's very, very mobile in that aspect. Like he likes to do that a lot, but based on the production itself, based on his mobility, I think he can really learn to add a, add a bit more in terms of his mechanics and his overall speed. I don't think that he has the mindset, not necessarily the mindset, but that aspect that makes him a first overall pick. I think he still needs to make some improvements over there. Great shot on his off wing. Um, You know, I I absolutely love players that can actually play on their off wing and thrive in that role. He does that phenomenally, but I don't know. I still have some question marks with his game, his consistency, even his puck control at times. I wouldn't necessarily take that in the first round, maybe early and mid second, but not the first. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good pick. Uh, I think he probably shouldn't be drafted in the first round uh, for sure. So my pick is uh, do not draft Shane Wright first overall. No. Oh, (laughs) Oh, you would have made some enemies here, Matt. (laughs) I mean, he'd be the steal just if jokes, he fell out just of first. jokes. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and Montreal Canadiens fans just shot to the comments. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I my, my do not draft is uh, do not draft uh, Slavkovsky ahead of Logan Cooley, um, and that's not a joke. I mean, I I, I really believe Cooley's going to have the higher upside. I mean, I get New Jersey Devils don't need him. Uh, but that's a team need thing. But I still believe he should be drafted ahead of Slavkovsky because of his overall game. I think Cooley's going to become a, a top end uh, two way centerman like you know those Patrice Bergeron, uh, you know Ryan Ryan O'Reilly, those types of players, Ansi Kopitar. You know those guys that aren't going to be hundred point players, but they're going to be guys that are win you cups. And Shane Wright's in that same category. Um, you know, that's why they've been talked that Cooley could potentially at times there was t- talk that Cooley could go ahead of right uh, first overall. So there's reasons for these guys being this high in the draft. And that's yeah. because of their importance, not just because they can score goals, but because they can defend and be that that type of center. You can just say, well, throw him out there because he's going he's going to be good. And it doesn't matter in what situation they're going to step up and be a difference maker. So. Um, as much as people probably debate this as what has been talked about Slavkovsky being second overall, uh, I believe Logan Cooley should be drafted second overall over Slavkovsky. Um, and that's why the devils are looking at trading that second overall pick because they're like, well, you know, we don't need Cooley, even though we think maybe, I mean, I'm not in their heads, but that's yeah. why there's been talk about it because they're like, well, we don't need this guy. We could trade it, get another pick, get another player and be there. So um, that's my do not draft as much as there will be some disagreement on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Cooley should be drafted ahead of Slavkovsky just because of the fact that he's a more important uh, position too yeah. than a wing. Yeah. Right? So uh, that's my pick there. Let's go to our next one. The surprising guy to fall. And this is what's the guy we always, I mean, we see this all the time guys that you're supposed, and we saw that so many times in the 2021 draft. They're like, why is this guy dropping all the way to the what fourth round? Uh, there's a few guys like that. And we're like, why isn't he drafted yet? So um, Peter, uh, who do you think uh, is a surprising guy that's going to fall in this draft that probably shouldn't? Uh, I'm going to say Noah Warren. And I, I absolutely love the kid. Um, fantastic two way game. Uh, I think there's going to be some knock on him because of offensive production, but he has a steady foundation that can be, you know, a very impactful top four shutdown defenseman think, you know, kind of like a Colton Pareko kind of thing. Mm. Um, you know, the big size, the heavy shot that he does have the mobility to jump into the rush. I think that's going to be very valuable. I, I don't th- personally, I don't think he will fall, but I think there may be instances where he may fall to, uh, considering that he's possibly a second rounder, he may fall mm. to the third and maybe fourth, given how teams may look for a uh, puck moving defenseman to mm. be more offensively gifted. Um, I think he has the potential to be that, but I wouldn't be surprised to see if, if, if he does fall, but I don't think that should be the case from my mm-hmm. opinion, but overall, I think I could see it happening. 
Yeah, that, and it depends. Again, this is all where a guy's going. One pick can <laughs> just mess up everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, one team can do it, and then all of a sudden you got guys dropping all over the place. So, um, Devin, who do you have as a surprising guy that's going to fall in this draft that probably shouldn't? I'm going to say something that makes my skin crawl. Uh, <laughs> and I mentioned it just a little bit ago. I think Matthew Savoy might fall. Um, and a lot of it has to do with A, his size, mm. and B, concussion concerns. Um, listen, I, I've, I've already made it known a couple times now that I'm a huge Matthew Savoy believer. <laughs> uh, I don't need to keep going on about that. But I am not an NHL GM. Uh, and NHL GMs value... Uh, size they do mm, um yeah. and they value they value players that they feel comfortable will play for them and not you know they're, they're not made of glass so to speak mm-hmm. i don't think savoy is made of glass i think he plays a tenacious game and i think that you know if you're made of glass you tend to not put yourself in a position to get rocked and he puts himself in a position to get rocked mm. um but i i could just see you know a team might be looking real hard at Savoy and maybe would consider it, but there's another player that they also like pretty much at the same level. And he's bigger, don't have the same concerns. Um, and before you know it, three teams in that same situation have passed on him. Hmm. And all of a sudden Savoy's going 12th overall. And um, like I said, if he falls out of the top 10, I think he's the steal of the draft because he's a, he's t- easily a top 10 player in my hmm. opinion, but because of those concerns, I could see him falling and uh, the more he falls, the further he falls out of the top 10, the more likely uh, I won't be on prospect corner anymore because my head exploded. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's getting, if he keeps falling and 15th pick keeps getting closer, I'm going to be like, please <laughs> yeah, <come laughs> not pick him. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Think, I don't think he's dropping to the 15. If he does, that's insane. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a lot of people's head explode, I think. <laughs> <with that laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, my surprising guy to fall, and this is going to be, again, I just mentioned a guy do not d- draft ahead. I think Cooley's going to fall. Yeah. And, you know, looking at all these guys that, um, you know, Nemitz, uh, you're a check. I, these guys are big time defensemen, right-hand shot teams that need those types of guys could draft them higher. And I mean, there's talk that Nemitz is second overall. I mean, I don't know if New Jersey goes that route. Um, picks Nemitz over Slavkovsky, but you never know because the Devils do need defense too. So, I mean, they've got that in their ballpark to actually pick a defenseman. I don't know how many people have actually discussed that. They could potentially draft Nemitz or Juracek uh, second overall. And that could be a possibility. I don't know, but I think Cooley could drop, uh, not very much. I think he'll drop, he may, if he does drop, drop maybe the, maybe the five. Um, third, third or fourth, maybe look at what happened to Eklund. I mean, we yeah. thought he was going to be yeah. a first overall pick, maybe second overall for sure. And all of a sudden he's dropping to sixth. So it's like, <laughs> it, it, it can be surprising guys that we think are going to be that high. And then all of a sudden they're, they're down, you know, lower than they should. So it's not out of the realm again, out of the realm of possibility that could happen. So Cooley's my pick on that. I made two picks in a row <laughs> that Cooley's my pick there. Okay, the next one, which won't be Cooley because he's already there, uh, the <laughs> most surprising guy that could jump into the top 10, which, again, has happened in the past. Uh, lots of guys that are supposed to be dropping a little lower, all of a sudden they're in the top 10. So, uh, Devin, who do you have in this category, a guy that could potentially jump into the top 10? No one's really expecting. Well, you know, it depends on uh... – you know, how you define no one, because I think Frank Nazar, could fit this, could, Frank Nazar could fit <laughs> this category. I think, you know, but like, like you said, even Craig Button has him as like a low first round, yeah. pick, but I could, I could see him going eighth, ninth, 10th overall. Um, and then uh, another one that I would say might be, uh, <laughs> might be kind of geeky. Honestly, I could uh, see geeky uh, kind of surprising and jumping up his size. He does have skill. He does, you know, he's, he's been a well-regarded prospect in this class for a while. Um, I've, I've mentioned some things that some, some things that I'm concerned about, but, uh, others are not as concerned. I've, I've even seen some, uh, some places say that they like geek you over Savoy, like, mm. and if one person thinks it, you know, somebody else mm. thinks it. Um, so I could see geeky being maybe a surprise. I don't think he jumps higher than like ninth or 10th overall, but if you're going ninth or 10th, you're in the top 10. Mm. Yeah. Um, and again, I mean, NHL GM still loves size. I mean, yep. he's skating like skating. Yes. It's a question mark, but 
Um, again, can be developed and he does have a ton of skills. So yeah, I don't think more than top 10 for sure, but you, you never know. I mean, teams can screw things and look where cop can went. Yeah. And that was I, not even expected. <laughs> and, and, I, and I mean, with, with the senators going with uh, Boucher last year, yeah, there's, there's no, no idea what they do with seventh <laughs> overall. So <laughs> we'll see if the Ottawa centers surprise us again. Okay. Peter, who do you have as a surprising guy that could jump into the top 10? So this is where I had Liam Ogren. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. This okay, is where I had Liam Ogren. <laughs> so um, mainly because of the fact that, you know, you saw his, you know, pro-like mentality at the U18s and how he was able, obviously, you know, it's a lower level competition, but, you know, for his age range, he was a dominant factor. And again, being on that line with uh, Noah Oslin, Jonathan mm-hmm. LaCara Mackey really helped out uh, considering that, you know, they're a top line, the, part of the Jure Gardens quartet or trio for the forward line, but, he has a very high end work ethic, a great competitive nature, um, great skill set, a lethal shot, great playmaking mm-hmm. abilities. He already has some pro like qualities already. And if there's one player that I think that could be close to being NHL ready, not saying immediately right now, mm-hmm. but maybe a two, three years down the line where he could come over sooner than expected. It's going to be probably Ogren. And I think he has that edge over Lakaramaki and Oslin, where he already plays a very mature game. Um, I do think that if there is a chance to, for him to get into the top 10, it's going to be like what Matt said. Uh, I mean, Devin said about uh, Connor Geeky, nine or 10 mm-hmm. range, just gets right in there. I yeah. think Liam Ogren could get right in there as well. Yeah, that that's a, a definite. I mean, Ogren's, I really like him too. Again, yeah. there's so many guys that. Mm-hmm. The Canucks should be going after. Uh, Ogren's another one. So, uh, I mean, they have options. A lot of teams have options up at this point. So, I mean, you never know what's going to happen here. Um, my surprise, and this is where a guy that I, I believe, and I'm going to repeat myself again, at uh, Matejak. I, I, I really... I really think as much as I say, you know, the 20th, I think a team will look at because of how many guys like Kale McCarr is ripping up the, um, the playoffs right now. You got yeah. uh, Quinn yeah. Hughes and really good again, two undersized guys and with similar skill sets to Matejchuk. I don't want to say Matejchuk's going to be at that level because that's a little bit, you don't want to put that on him, but he's got a lot of attributes and just go back to what I just said, what I said about the steal of the draft and, um, I think a team could potentially say that he's a top 10 pick because of his skill and what type of defenseman that fits into the modern NHL right now. And uh, he definitely fits um, regardless of his uh, defensive deficiencies that people say. So um, I'm a Tate as you can see, he's a favorite of mine and I hope yeah, he doesn't yeah. go in the top 10 because that means the Canucks can't get him. So, but I think he could potentially do that. <laughs> I could, I could see him going to the ducks at 10. I really could. Yeah. 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 Well, they went Olin, Olin Zellweger and, uh, yep. Yep. you know, not that high, but, uh, yeah. yeah, they, they do, they do like those types of defensemen. So, um, yeah, that would, that would be a, a ducks pick for sure. Okay. Let's do a disappointing one. I, mean, I don't like, doing these ones, but this is something that does happen um, a lot in the first round is potential busts and uh, guys that, you know, draft in the first round, but never pan out. And we don't like to put a label on some of these, but I mean, let's do it. (laughs) Uh, uh, Devin, who do you have as a potential bust? I mean, not, not necessarily that they're going to never make the NHL and, but not to be the point that of everyone's kind of expecting right now. Uh, I'm going to quickly do two because, uh, I'm, again, I'm glad you made the disclaimer because it's bust doesn't mean you're not a player. It just means you don't live up to maybe mm-hmm. the hype that surrounded you going into the draft. One of them would be Cutter Gothier. Uh, I could see him going really high, like maybe sixth overall, and he ends up just being kind of a middle six guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, a middle six guy is still a really good player, but that's not what you're looking for at sixth overall, mm. so to speak. So I could see him being a player that fits that. Um, he, there's a reason why he's not like at the top of my list for the Red Wings. Mm. And that's one of them. Uh, the other one, I mentioned him as a surprising player to jump up in the top <laughs> 10. That would be kind of geeky. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, I'm not wowed by him. I really can't put my finger on it, but nothing about him. Like really, he doesn't have that it factor for me that other players do. Um, and I mean, again, just like I said, with, uh, Gautier, I, I'm not saying he won't be a player. I just don't think he will be, um, the player that he's drafted to be. I could mm. see geeky being a bottom six center, maybe a third line center that mm. 
is really, really good. But again, not what you're looking for out of a top 15 pick. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't say um, either of those players I mentioned are going to be boss in the sense they don't make the NHL, but they just don't live up to what the draft slot says they should be. Yeah, it's different categories of busts. Uh, it's it's not making the NHL at all, like a Griffin. Oh, well, he did make the NHL, but um, <laughs> those types like Griffin Reinhardt, who yeah. was drafted really high and never really panned out in the NHL. He did play some games, but not at a level of what he was drafted at. So, and we're not saying they're never going to make the NHL, but uh, this is a, like you know we've said before. Um, Peter, who do you have as a potential bust? Uh, I guess I don't like putting these labels on these guys, but yeah. um, it happens. Yeah, not necessarily the fact that he's not going to make the NHL because I really do think that he is. It's going to be Jager Furcus and not mm-hmm. necessarily in the sense that, and you know what, I a, li- a little bit on the size because he is 150, you know, um, I believe he's 157 pounds, 154. So mm-hmm. compared to other smaller players, he does need to put on a lot of weight um, or add a little muscle, add mm-hmm. a little strength. Um to be an impactful, you know, top six forward that maybe he's projected to be, but there's also the sense that maybe he doesn't reach that kind of ceiling. Maybe he's still a third liner, very energetic goal scoring winger that, you know, can still make a significant impact on the score sheet because he does play with pace, has a lethal shot, has a speed to like evade opponents and stuff like that. But a mix of the size, a mix of, you know, maybe potential may not be as high as, it, as it's going to be at the next level. Because considering the fact that he had 80 points a season, that's like first line kind of like top tier, top six potential. He may not reach out at the NHL level and it's going to be a completely different game. But if he's able to add that strength, then we're talking about a different story. But until then, maybe just want to tap, tap our little bit of expectations mm-hmm. with him just a little bit. Yeah, well, we all love Jagger Furcus, and we've yeah. said we've mentioned him a lot. We're not putting anything against this guy. I mean, he's definitely going to be an NHLer, but uh, where he's going to probably be drafted, he may mm-hmm. not turn into what everyone's kind of thinking he will, um, or he might. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, right? But definitely has potential of being that type of player. My pick is going to create a bit of debate, and this is a guy, Yuri Slavkovsky. I, I don't, he's going to be drafted second overall, most likely. Uh, if not third, I mean, he's going to be drafted in the top five. I don't think he's going to be as impactful a player as everyone thinks he's going to be. Um, as much as he's done it against men um, in the, you know, everyone says that he's done it against men. He's playing against, uh, you know, he's playing in the Olympics. He's playing the world championships and he's doing really well. Nothing against that. I mean, that's great, yeah. but he hasn't really done that in his league. I mean, he hasn't been that dominant. And then everyone's expecting he's going to be an NHL player that's going to score 40, 50 goals. I, I don't see it. I'm um, right now. I don't see it as much as sample size is not enough uh, to me to put that type of expectation on him. I think he's going to be an NHL player, great NHL player, but not to a point of being a superstar difference maker that everyone kind of thinks. Cause it's been really recent. He's been put into the second overall conversation. I mean, yeah. What was at the beginning of the season? I don't think he was even talked about as a top 10 pick. Was he? I don't yeah, think yeah, he I was. Think was. Slavkowski was top 10, maybe not so much, maybe top five, but yeah. he was in top 10. In that area. Yeah. But he wasn't put on this much of a pedestal as everyone mm-hmm. he's kind of put, yeah. been put on now. So, I mean, he may, he may do it, but I, I think he's, I think we got temper expectations on him and whatever team drafts him, fans don't think he's going to be this huge difference maker, at least, don't put that on him because I don't think he's going to be that. Um, if he does, that's awesome. But uh, I think you got to temper expectations because it's not fair to him um, just because of he's done so great at the national team, international level, which doesn't always translate um, to the NHL. So we will see, and that's going to be interesting to follow. Okay. Let's get to our final category. This is a little bit of fun category. We love doing this one. So um, the best name of the draft, we had a few really good ones last year, Red Savage, Owen Power. Um, there was a few other guys, but those are the two that kind of stand out to me. Um, this year, we've got a few other guys like that. Um, Devin, who's your best name of the draft? Uh, I'm going to throw out two. So sorry. <laughs> sorry if I steal one. Uh, Rucker McGroarty, hell of a name. Love that. Yes, that's awesome. And then Cutter, <laughs> Cutter, come on, Cutter <laughs> Those are great. Those are great names. I mean, and the thing is that, you know, looking at Rutger McGroarty and this is Arizona, if they draft him that high, that's kind of, but they haven't, do they have another first round pick? Oh, they do. But 
that that'd be just great to go to Arizona Coyotes. I mean, Brett McGrory. <laughs> so, <laughs> it just it just sounds like a hockey player. I can't even put my finger it, on it. <laughs> it. It's awesome. Yeah, um, Peter, who do you have as the best name of the draft? Uh, kind of too. I mean, Luca Del Belbelus has a really great name. That's, yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, Devin's talked about it before. You know, Jager Furkis moves like Jager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's that's a great name too, and I'm gonna throw out one that I'm gonna talk about in prospects of the week, but I'll mention his name right now is Micro Mastro Dominico. Yeah, uh, he probably a heck of a time spewing that in his in school to spell that. And it's like, <laughs> what, well, you've done your name yet? No, I'm still writing. <laughs> How funny! That's my that's my Mastro Dominico. That, that that's just awesome. That's an amazing name. The double M too, which is honorable is mention Maverick. Honorable mention for me, Maverick Lamaru, mainly yes, because of the new, yes. mainly because of the new Top Gun movie, you know, Maverick yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a good one too. Uh, there's a few really, and there's actually a few really good ones if you look through the draft um, that potentially may even not even be mm-hmm. drafted, but uh, <laughs> their names are up there. Okay, uh, let's get to our <laughs> last segment, prospects of the week. Um, I mean. There's a few that we had. I, I had a hard time picking this time as I mean, there's so many prospects. Uh, it's hard to choose and to not repeat ourselves too. Um, Peter, who do you have as your uh, prospect of the week? Yeah, we're going to the St. John Sea Dogs uh, for, based on the Memorial Cup and the performance. William Villeneuve, um, Maple Leafs prospect. Obviously, you know, I, I don't really pick a lot of Maple Leafs prospects unless when I need to. And I've been really happy with this progression and his overall defensive game, you know, a lot of hit, a lot of uh, ups with his offensive production and his, you know, playmaking abilities. But you know, he had the foundation of a two-way game. Still needed to work on that and needed to get into a little bit more positioning, add some strength. And I think he's done that very well this season. I think he's the very underrated prospect in the Maple Leaf system heading into this tournament. I thought he was a name to keep an eye on, and we're seeing some of that benefit pay off. And hopefully, he continues his trajectory because I like the path that he's on right now. Yeah, he was one of my favorites at the draft. Um, you know, I, he was, yeah, he was one of those guys that could potentially, I think he's going to be a really good defenseman mm-hmm. in the NHL. And it's great to see him uh, doing what he's doing right now. So definitely to, great to follow him. Oh, hey, Devin, uh, who's your uh, prospect of the week? Well, uh, Grindline was given some uh, some flack for not mentioning this guy um, yeah. during our prospect coverage episode. So figure I'd give him some love on this show. Uh, and that would be um, Swedish forward Pontus Andreasen. Talk about a cool name, right? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was a undrafted uh, free agent signed out of Sweden because that's all the Red Wings know is Sweden. Um, <laughs> he's listed as a center and a winger. So it'll be interesting to see where he ends up you know, getting the, getting the most look basically, mm. uh, in, in training camp. Um, there's hope that this guy is going to be a, uh, NHL player for the Red Wings. Um, I, I know I re- replied to that comment, uh, that I, I try not to get too high on these free mm-hmm. agent European free agents, because for every, uh, you know, our Timmy Panarin that comes through, uh, you get a Villy Leno that mm-hmm. just kind of disappears into nothingness. So, um, you can't be too high on a player just because they look good uh, in any given year. Mm-hmm. Now, to that point, this year in the SHL, uh, he did have quite the year. He had 38 points in 52 games. That includes 18 goals. And then in the playoffs, he followed up with 13 points in 13 mm-hmm. games. Uh, and that's playing in a men's league, SHL, and he's 23. So he's not, you know, a veteran forward. He's 23. Mm-hmm. He's got room to grow still. So, um, yes, he is definitely, to, to that comment, yes, he is definitely mm-hmm. a name to keep an eye on. Um, and I look forward to seeing what he can do at training camp and see if he can push his way onto the roster. Um, so, yeah, keep keep an eye out for Andreasen because a uh, little under the radar sign for mm-hmm. the Red Wings, but it might end up paving, or, um, paying off really well for them. Yeah, and uh, over in Canuckland, uh, we have to temper expectations on Andre Kuzmenko because, uh, yeah. again, European free agent. But, I mean, he's ripped up the KHL. He's 26, so he's more a veteran uh, forward. He's not really a prospect anymore. I was going to mention him in my prospect report, and then I realized I'm going to get flack for this one. <laughs> he's not really a prospect. Um, so we'll see what he does, but uh, he's not by prospect of the week because uh, he's not a prospect. Um, my prospect of the week, I alluded to him before, is Michael Mastro Domenico. I love saying that name again. Uh, he, 
I mean, I just wrote his prospect profile. I haven't released that yet. That's coming uh, today sometime. So I'll look out for that to more about him. But uh, just generally, I mean, he's he's a guy that's probably not going to be drafted high. I mean, he's probably going to be drafted in the fifth, sixth round, maybe. And there's even guys that don't think he will be drafted at all. But uh, he's he's got some great attributes that could potentially be an NHL player. I mean, he didn't have an amazing season in the USHL, but uh, – yeah, decent one. And looking at his overall game, he just loves he loves jumping up into the play. He's probably one of the like most aggressive defensemen and doing that. Uh loves doing stepping up in the rush. Uh maybe at times that maybe don't do it, but uh he, he he's usually pretty good at doing it. Um, pretty good, decent shot. Uh one thing that's all I, I looked through when I was doing my research on this guy and looking at videos. His, his skating is not at the best. I mean, he was kind of touted as a, in the scouting reports I looked at throughout the QMJHL draft, which he was drafted into. I uh, didn't play, hasn't played in that league yet, but um, was touted as being a pretty good skater. But now a lot of different guys have been kind of saying his skating isn't the best. And this is one thing that needs, maybe not his skating and job, but his mechanics. Uh, he's got to kind of refine that to be an NHL player potentially. But I think he's got enough tools to be potentially an AHL guy or a bottom pairing defenseman. But we've been just surprised with these guys in the past. He's a right-hand shot, got decent size, six foot two. So, I mean, he's not like he's a small guy. Um, very good at uh, blocking shots as well. So um, guys like that have made the NHL in the past, improve his skating, you never know. So look, keep an eye out for Mastro Domenico, just, not just because of his name, but uh, he's got some skill <laughs> too. So uh, look up. Imagine imagine trying to fit that name on the back of a jersey Good <laughs> you're gonna need some smaller letters yeah, yeah. Uh, we're using font eight for this one <laughs> but uh yeah we'll, we'll find it we'll find out if he's able to uh translate his skill into the ncaa which he's playing going to be playing for notre uh, notre dame and um next year so uh that's gonna be interesting to see what he can do in the next level okay that, that was a fun episode um uh, you know, we had some fun with the with Mario Cup and then some quick hit draft stuff, uh, which is coming up quick. Our next episode, we'll be able to say it's next week. So uh, <laughs> it's only a few days away after our episode next week. So we'll have some a little bit more preview talking about the draft, what other stuff is going to happen. And then we're going to have, a, of course, right after the draft, we'll be talking uh, recap the first round and then talking about uh, later rounds later on. So that's going to be fun to do as well. So Stick to the hockey writers. We got, like I say, prospect profiles coming out every day. Features. I started a, a draft showdown uh, series, which uh, did Nemitz versus Yurichek. Who would you draft? Um, you know, I'm not going to spoil it of who I picked, but definitely check that article out. Uh, I'll be doing a few more of those uh, coming up in the next week or so. So look out for that. And uh, again, all the stuff on the hockeywriters.com and the Dinochel draft guide which is packed full of uh, lots of great information from all of our uh, draft um, prospect guys. So um, got a great team uh, doing the job uh, on that. So definitely I'll check that out. Um, so thanks for watching again, another prospect corner and uh, thanks, Peter. Thanks Devin for joining me again and we will see you next time. And, you know, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. <laughs>